Uh, my name is Simon Hart, I work for Innovate UK. Uh, I actually have two jobs. Uh, one's Innovate UK, uh, where I look after smart infrastructure, and the other is I'm the management officer for the BIM task group delivering Digital Build Britain. Um, so I actually wanted to come here to you today and actually talk a little bit through uh, what is happening on the Digital Built Britain programme. I appreciate some of you may not be aware of the current developments. Now, we're under PERDA at the moment as a government organisation, so I can't tell you anything about what's happening in future. All I can tell you about is the existing work, the existing contracts, of where we are now. Uh, I also can't ask any, answer any questions on future activity either, uh, not until after the election. So please bear with me on that. Um, hopefully I can answer and solve any queries you've got other than those. So uh, this is uh, a slide, some of you may well have seen this before, um, sets out some of the original objectives of what the BIM programme was about. Uh, in particular, the industrial strategy objectives, lower cost, faster delivery, lower emissions, increasing exports. Um, the, um, as we know, construction in the UK is a £90 billion pound industry. I think that's gone up slightly now. Um, however, it's also one of the least productive. Um, it's uh, estimated to be around 13% of the uh, global GDP, uh, but it hasn't improved in productivity uh, by more than 1% in 10 years. Um, that's the nature of the problem that we face. Um, and of course, everybody knows this because there's been several reports written about it right the way from 1934, 44, 94, uh, all the way up to the one we had recently. The, the, um, I know it's actually the way the reports get more and more uh, uh, negative, maybe, the way they go forward. So we had one that was um, uh, never waste a good crisis, and then the latest one is modernise or die. So that's really where we are with the industry. Um, of course, most of you should be aware of this. Uh, if you're not, you're probably living under a rock. Um, this is the, the, the legendary BIM wedge, um, and I, even I don't confess to understanding it too well. Um, however, um, the point at which we are now business as usual as a government um, is around level two. So all government procurement coming out from the central departments should be requesting uh, BIM, uh, BIM level two compliance um, on, all, on all projects. Um, that is where um, the original BIM task group um, uh, withdrew from the program effectively. It went from being a development process of developing standards, um, support documents, uh, into business as usual, so embedding it in those departments. I'll keep pressing the wrong button on this, sorry guys. Um, the level two program, as I mentioned, it is now currently in a supporting role. So there are actually weekly meetings taking place between, um, how many know Terry Stocks? Probably a few, yeah, of course. He's quite well known. Uh, Terry Stock till, still chairs the, um, the Government um, Construction Board uh, group, and that meets every week, and every week they're talking about how to embed the BIM standards and processes into government departments. Um, and that is to make sure that you, as a supply chain, uh, have the opportunities to sell products and services um, level two compliant into those organisations. Um, as I mentioned, that's, that's one area of support that we, that we have for the existing... Uh, the existing programme, the programme that was developed uh, up to meet the mandate. Um, there's also numerous achievements that were delivered under that programme, uh, most famously the prison estate, the cook and wood. Um, this little diagram here, it hasn't come out too well, but it maps out the, the departmental savings um, from the point at which um, the Level 2 programme began up to the past the mandate. Um, aiming down towards here is about 20% savings. These are the typical targets that the departments are aiming for. Um, and of course, what the, the Level 2 programme did was, was uh, fundamentally, it delivered standards. It did standards and ways of working that was packaged up uh, and made available to the public for free. And that's the big, that was the, one of the biggest um, benefits of the, of the government standards, being free, because they weren't just adopted by the UK, they were also adopted worldwide. Some of you may not be too aware of the, of the um, city standards, smart city standards. It was another past series developed by a different team. These guys sat at DCMS, um, Department for Culture, Media and Sport, uh, and they were developing um, a set of standards quite similar to what BIM was, but focusing on, um, on local government, particularly around city development. And I'll come back to these in a minute. One other area of, um, of the Level 2 programme that, that's, um, that is under development now, um, many of you might be aware of the Construction Products Association lexicon document. Uh, which is looking at how you, how you move from a level two model into manufacturing. So how you start to turn those designs and processes into design for manufacturing assembly products, moving closer towards off-site. International. Uh, the international programme uh, 
the UK is still the recognised world leader in BIM. So pat yourselves on the back for that, because that's due to the supply chain. Um, the, we have, uh, as, the, as the BIM task group, we chair the EU BIM task group uh, for a while. Uh, we chair the EU BIM task group, we do at the moment. Uh, and that is helping uh, EU countries again to adopt um, the UK standards, practices and ways of doing things. Um, but more interestingly, we're seeing increasing amount of demand from, uh, from South America. Uh, we have signed MOUs with Brazil, uh, Chile and Mexico. Um, and those, those visits are typically supported by uh, the Foreign Office. And um, we recently signed an MOU uh, with Japan. Um, these are international activities where effectively UK government goes overseas and teaches overseas governments how to do things our way. And that's typically followed up by return visits where they come and learn about how we've actually implemented that, particularly reaching out to the supply chain and seeing how the supply chain are working with the standards. Um, those are getting quite, um, quite a successful range of events and activities. Um, we again are seen as, as, a, as a country to be ahead of other, other nations in terms of our standards and processes, um, which is useful when you're looking to um, export services to increase that, he heading towards that 50% improvement in exports that was targeted in the industrial strategy. Now, just talk about those smart city standards again. Um, how many of you have seen these diagrams before? This one. Okay, a few of you. Okay, there was a version of this in um, Andrew Wilsonholm's report, the, uh, uh, the crisis report. Um, so this is really describing, in terms of value, why we do BIM. So starting all the way over this side, um, this, this here is the design and build phase. Um, typically, it, it's around 20% of the costs of the process. Um, when you move into operation of your asset, and let's say, let's take a hospital, for example. So design and build, you move into operational phase. It's around 80% of your budget is it goes into that phase. Um, but actually, it's the cost of the organization uh, is around 300% more. So this is your NHS estate operating, as in functioning. So these are the costs related to the organization that is, then, that is using those facilities that you built here. Each one of these functions um, represents a function of the organization. And, and for the sake of saying a hospital, we can say, okay, this is an operating theater. So this is the operating theater and the performance, the operational performance of that operating theater right down to how the effects of how, let's say, how all the HIPAA filters were designed and fitted to that building, how easy they are to maintain, what's the downtime on that facility for cleaning, uh, what are the supply routes in and out, what are the obstacles in the building which may get in the way of its performance. Because ultimately what that leads to is the societal performance of that asset. And the societal performance is the really big target. That's the 3,000% multiplied up. So what we want to make sure is if that Right the way from this process, the design is correct. It is designed and built correctly. That feeds through to the operation, feeds through to the organizational performance. Because if you can take 10% off this, okay, it's not a great deal of much of capital, but if you can reduce this, the cost of this 10%, that pays for all of this many times over. Now, I mentioned about the smart city standards. So at the top of the diagram here, you've got the, the original PASS series. So this is your 1192 series up here. I'll take you through design, build, and operate. Um, this side, these are the smart city standards. So these are the ones that focus on societal outcomes. Societal outcomes is this section. So when you're designing a city, when you're working as a local government, this is really what you're focusing on. And interesting, the point is that these standards are now starting to beat somewhere in the middle. And what is driving the, the functions and organizational performance in here is information. So the information standards which sit in here is what BIM Level 3 is focusing on. And BIM Level 3, as some of you may know, there's, there's, a, there's a strong focus around information and data. Um, one of the things we're looking at is Internet of Things. Um, there's also an Internet of Things standard um, that is under consideration. So this is a typical way we can map out the standards that come from both sides. One from ground up and construction, so capital delivery, and from the other end, the societal needs pulling, on, pulling that, um, that um, in the, towards the right-hand side. So lastly, um, that's the current structure of the Digital Built Britain program. Um, that is, it's not publicly available, but it has been presented, hence why I can present it to you this evening. Um, top end of the organisation is a stakeholder board um, formed from the Cabinet Office, uh, Department for Business Innovation and Skills. Um, this, from this line down, it sits inside Innovate UK as a delivery arm. 
So this is why Innovate UK is acting as a, a delivery point for, for the, the next phase of the BIM task group. Just to give a quick <coughs> overview of where we are, um, we, have a, we have a team dedicated to international. So they are the ones going overseas, uh, teaching, uh, doing government-to-government -government relationships, um, teaching other governments overseas how to do things the UK way. We have markets engagement. So this is looking to find uh, commercial investment into the future of BIM Level 3. Uh, we have security. Uh, many of you are aware of the, um, uh, the PASS 1192 Part 5 standard um, that's, that's focusing on cyber security. Um, that's supported by CPNI. Um, we have the Level 3 delivery team. The Level 3 delivery team is currently hosted at the Future Cities Catapult. Um, and they are working around setting out the outline business case of what Level 3 becomes. Then moving further over here, we have the existing Level 2 support team uh, working with Cabinet Office. And then finally on this side, we have a manufacturing project looking to, to move at Level 2 into manufacturing, working with the Ministry of Justice on one of their new prisons estates. That's the Level 3 programme. Um, if you've got any questions about it, I think we'll probably have a panel session at the end. Thank you very much.